Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Paul Jones. My wife and I own Deepwood Ventures. We make uh, wood carving knives, hunting knives, and carving tools. Uh, we've been doing it since about 2005 as a result of, uh, of me making carving tools all my life, being a wood carver and wanting for a better tool. I've been making my wood carving tools since I was a teenager. My dad would bring home uh, mechanical hacksaw blades and I would make wood carving tools from those hacksaw blades. So technically I've been making them since a teen I was a teenager. But along about 2002, 2003, I pulled all of my carving knives out of my carving bag and decided that some of them had to go. So I sharpened them up, polished them up, and I put them on eBay. And I got a pretty good response. And before I knew it, I had folks calling me from all over the United States saying, well, can you make one like you, the one you sold on May 17th? And I got a lot of orders that way. So I decided to go formal and put my website up Put a, put a website up and uh, start selling them full time. Uh, I developed a, a cadre or a, or a collection of knives that people like to use for wood carving and uh, that developed my patterns and uh, I've been going ever since. Typically in a week, uh, let's see, around Christmas time I made about uh, 90 to 100 a week and when it gets really slow and quiet in February, I'm down to maybe 10. Uh, but otherwise, I'm pretty busy. I, I keep busy. I come out here after work each night and work for about four hours trying to keep up with my orders and try to get them out within the week. We sell all over the world. I've sold to uh, clients or to customers in Hungary, China, Sweden, all over Scandinavia, Ireland, England, um, Nova Scotia, Australia. Uh, some of my best customers are in Australia. And what amazes me is there's some world-class bladesmiths in Sweden, Finland, and Norway, and they also are some of my best customers. We've started out with our drill rod, which is our annealed drill rod. We just ran through the forge, and I pounded it to this form. Now for our next step, we're going to grind that form into what looks like a nice wood carving blade. So I'm using a, a ceramic belt which kind of sharpens itself as I go. And here we go with that. Now at this point of the grinding, we're not worried about the blue and about burning the, burning the steel. We're not really burning the steel, we're even bringing it into a more annealed state. Uh, if this was a heat treated blade, whereas it was hardened and tempered, the blade would be pretty much ruined, It'd be too soft. We'll go through those, those processes next. We've rough ground the blade, uh, we've given it its rough angle, we've left the edge that's oh, about a thick as a credit card maybe, a little under, and we'll, we'll be sharpening that down after heat treating. Now we're gonna heat treat our blades. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. We're running a little hot. Now this is the, this is the more crucial part of the, of the knife making. We can get, bring all these to all these steps, and go through the process of grinding it, but of all the things that you have to do, this is probably the most important. This is where we have to make sure that the color is right and that, the, that it reaches uh, non-magnetic. That's when all the carbons and all the, all the alloys and steel is in solution, meaning that the carbons, carbon molecules and uh, the, the iron molecules kind of mix together to make a nice hard steel blade 
to form what's called a, a martensite. Now, the reason that we want all these things to form in solution because they get really fine and then uh, it creates a fine grain steel which makes for a fine grain edge which makes for a fine fine edge which is ultimate for wood carving. So we've got our steel at a nice bright orange. Now as you see as it cools down it starts to change color. Now when it reaches a certain darkness it starts to heat up again. You can see where it's where it's moving from dark to light again. Now we want to try and hit that before it, it makes a change in color. So we've got nice bright orange. We're going to test it against the magnet. It's not sticking because it's just hot enough that nothing is in solution. But once it gets cooled down, it sticks. Bright orange, we're looking for that red. Here we go. Now we've gotten our blade out of the out of the um, quench, and it's hard right now. But the problem with it being hard is it's very brittle. We don't want it to be brittle because when we when it's too brittle, I can take it and snap it off. Pretty, pretty easily. And that's not what we want, what we want. so we have to, have to temper it. But before we temper it, we make sure that everything got hard. One way to test that is to take a, take a known hardness, which is a file, uh, which is, I've read it's about a 68 Rockwell, which is a very hard piece of steel. We're gonna run it across there. And you can see how it's just taking the carburation off the top, but I can't really file on the steel. It, it won't cut it, it just skates off. We know we've gotten hard enough. But in order to prevent that snapping part to happen, we're gonna stick it in a tempering oven and bake it. We're gonna do this three times. And what this does is it creates more of that martensite that we talked about before and makes a tougher blade, makes a finer edge blade, and uh, stays sharp longer, and is just a tougher blade for, for anybody to use. Now, we've had it in our tempering oven for, for our three times at about 350 degrees in a sliding scale, which means it's, it's slowly cooled, slowly less time at the same temperature. Give us this nice dark bronze slightly purple, which uh, gives us the perfect hardness for hardness and flexibility for our blade. Now comes the polishing and sharpening part. Now of all, of all the processes, this probably takes long, long the longest just in the fact of, of all the time spent at these wheels right here. First, we're gonna do a rough, do our final smooth grind on it. The same grind will give us our polish and our edge at the same time. We're down to our final grind and we've just ba basically started to form the blade. Now this final fine grind is a setup for the polishing of the blade. made our blade. It's got a pretty good polish on it right now, but we won't do a final polish till the blade gets installed into the handle. Most of the Deep Woods Ventures knives are made out of burl. Now what a burl is, it's a growth on the tree that's kind of a big wart on the tree. And what happens is, is the way this wart grows, it gives you some nice figure.
We've got our handle and we've got our blade. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, that's a glorified epoxy super glue. I'm just gonna put a couple drops in there. Now this super glue will hold several tons of force. We just slide it in here. You can see that's gonna be a good tight fit. Just gonna bring it up to that glue point and push it down. Check for straightness. Make a slight, slight adjustment. And now we're ready to go back and finish the handle. Okay, we've smoothed out the handle. And you can see that wonderful birch flame green in there. Now comes the best part. We, we, uh, when I first started making carving knives, I wasn't putting a maker's mark on there. And a tool collector friend of mine says, well, you gotta put a maker's mark on there. And my maker's mark is a deer hoof, which is a deer track, would be a deer track on the handle. Now the reason it's a deer hoof is that I bought this, the property in which we live on to deer hunt because I'm a bow hunter. And it turns out I'm not a very good bow hunter because all I see is deer hooves or deer tracks. So that's my maker's mark. What we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this iron up until it's nice and glowing, glowing orange and make our maker's mark. So we've got our brand, oh, it's a little bit more orange hot. Now we get to put the maker's mark on there. Put our finish on our handle. It's nice. It's dried out, and now comes the final sharpening. Uh, we've went back to the big gray wheel, run run our sharpening across again, and now we test it. The idea of testing is to most guys when they test a knife, they they shave the hair off their arms. Well, I don't have any hair on my arms anymore to shave, so uh, we're actually going to test it on what we use it on, and when you test a wood carving knife to see if it's sharp, you're going to want to go across the end grain of a piece of basswood or the wood you're going to carve. And it should be nice and clear. It should make that nice, nice wood carving peeling potato sound. My favorite part is the constant improvement, the constantly trying to get better and refine one aspect of blade making, one half degree at a time, and then that makes me happy. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.